Hello, Jeff Zwerink here. Welcome back to Give and Take, the segment of our show where we explore important scientific ideas to help you be more confident in the truth of Christianity. Today, I'm joined by founder and president of Reasons to Believe, Dr. Hugh Ross, and we're going to investigate the Bible's claim that the earth started out dark. Hugh, it's good to have you here today. Well, thank you for having me on, Jeff. So as you look at the Genesis creation accounts, uh, probably outside of in the beginning after God created the heavens and the earth, the thing that most people are familiar with are God uh, making light on the surface of the earth. And day one there, he created the light and separated the light from the darkness. So I guess my question kind of to get started off today is, why is it that we claim the Bible says the earth started off dark? Paul tells us in Genesis 1-2 that there was darkness over the surface of the waters of planet Earth. And if you go to a parallel text in Job 38, verses 8 and 9, it explains that God had blanketed the earthy waters of the Earth with clouds that kept the seas dark. So it's dark not because there was no light in the universe. God created the light in Genesis 1-1, in the beginning. Uh, but it's dark on the surface of the waters because the primordial earth had an atmosphere that was so extremely thick, no visible light could penetrate to the surface. That seems to me a very profound point because a lot of people, myself included for many years, kind of looked at the creation account as being out in the cosmos. But if I get the implications of what you're saying, it's like it's dark on the surface of the earth because that's where the creation account is being witnessed. Is that what you're saying? It is what I'm saying. More importantly, it's what Genesis 1-2 is stating. The Spirit of God is hovering over the surface of the waters of planet Earth. And that indicates that we're to interpret the account of the six creation days from that frame of reference, that point of view of an observer on the surface of the waters of planet Earth. Okay, so we've got this scenario where Genesis and other passages in Scripture, after the creation of the universe, uh, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, we now have darkness on the surface of the earth. Um, what is the new discovery that affirms this dark condition on the surface of the earth? Well, it's a study done by a team where they basically model what would have happened uh, with the earth forming. And they also looked at Venus and Mars and discovered that uh, when you have these newly formed planets, uh, they're gonna be very hot. Uh, basically, you've got molten lava right up to the surface of these planets, and they're able to demonstrate that you're gonna get an atmosphere uh, that's mostly nitrogen or mostly carbon dioxide uh, with some nitrogen and no oxygen, and that all three planets start off with the same atmospheric composition, and moreover, uh, Venus and Earth start off with very thick atmospheres. So, so you've got this scenario where the, the planet Earth is just originally very uninhabitable. Uh, that actually also seems to fit with the, the rest of the description in Genesis 1-2. It's formless and void. Uh, darkness is over the surface of the planet. Doesn't that have the connotation of being just very hostile to life? It does. And uh, what these researchers point out is that Venus and Mars still have the same atmospheric composition that they had when they first formed. It's Earth that has experienced a dramatic change. So we started off with all this carbon dioxide, small amount of nitrogen, no oxygen, but today we got a very different atmosphere. And basically it's because Earth had a different formation history than either Mars or Venus. So let's explore that a little bit because so we've got this scientific data that points to uh, how what the Bible describes for the early earth matches what we find scientifically. Right. Uh, how do we get from this rather hostile atmosphere? I mean, mostly carbon dioxide with a little bit of nitrogen seems very inhospitable, very different from what we have today. So how do we get from that atmosphere to the one where it's largely nitrogen with uh, some oxygen and a, a very little amount of everything else? Well, these researchers uh, mention one thing, and that's the collision early in Earth's history between the primordial Earth and the planet Thea, what's otherwise known as the moon forming event. And the merger of those two planets, or collision between those two planets, uh, would have stripped away virtually all of Earth's water, surface water, and all of its atmosphere. And you get a much thinner atmosphere and thinner layer of water uh, replacing that. 
Okay, so this collision stripped off all the atmosphere, makes it a much thinner atmosphere because you know Earth would have a more dense atmosphere than Venus and Mars just because of its greater size. So it accounts right. for that. Is that all that's in play there? Because it seems like you got a lot of oxygen, a lot of water. That's that's the hallmark of Earth and why it's so habitable. How did we get to the abundance of oxygen and the abundance of water that we have on our Well, planet? these researchers do mention that we have photosynthetic life very early on Earth, and that produces the oxygen. What I've added uh, in a blog I wrote on this discovery is that you need a second phenomena. You need a deep oxygen cycle uh, between the crust and the mantle in order to produce enough oxygen in Earth's atmosphere. And there are two major events in the past history of the Earth that basically boosted the oxygen content from about one ten thousandth of a percent up to its present day 21%. And so, so, yes, you do need the photosynthetic life, but you also need this unusual deep oxygen cycle going on. Well, flesh out for us, when you say deep oxygen cycle, what are you talking about there? Well, talking about plate tectonics, that's what's unique about the Earth. Uh, neither Venus nor Mars had long lasting strong, strong plate tectonics, but Earth did for a number of reasons. And it's a plate tectonic activity that basically took uh, carbon from the life on planet Earth, brought it down into the mantle where a chemical reaction takes place uh, that basically produces, uh, you know, diamonds and graphene uh, in the crust or the mantle of the Earth, but it also produces a release of oxygen. And so you get these oxygen pulses coming into the atmosphere uh, thanks to Earth's strong enduring plate tectonic activity and also thanks to the abundance of uh, microbial life on the surface of the Earth. It really does seem like Earth has a remarkable history. Uh, you know, it's, it's remarkable that we can trace out what its history was, but the types of events that occurred seem a little extraordinary in a way. It's, it's almost like Earth was designed for life to be here. Yes, and what I find remarkable is the geological events that shot the oxygen up happen at exactly the time that you would need in order to bring animals in the face of the earth. If those things were not precise, those events were not precisely timed and of the right magnitude, our planet would not be able to sustain any kind of animal life. It's fascinating to discover that as we look at scientifically how the earth has developed, we find that the scientific development matches the biblical description when we see, particularly in Genesis 1, but in Job and other places throughout the scriptures. And what it really points to and affirms, in my opinion, is that new scientific discoveries continue to validate the biblical description of creation. You know, I would encourage you to go to reasons.org and check out Hugh's latest blog on this topic. It's titled, Earth's Primordial Magma Ocean Affirms Genesis 1 Creation Events. It will give you insight into this remarkable phenomena of the concordance between science and scripture and equip you to be able to go out and share using this remarkable coincidence, concordance, if you will, to go out and share the gospel with those God brings across your path.